All right, guys. So today we're gonna be doing a—I guess you could say it's a bit of a, tu uh, yeah, a tutorial <laughs> on how to use the M119 howitzer in Arma 2. Uh, sex with the Ace mod. So go ahead and get started. So this is the howitzer. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, you have this, and you have a collimator that's set up over here. Um, as soon as you place the howitzer, that gets placed along with it. And the way that works, if we get into it as the gunner and we change the view, you can see we're lined up on this thing now. So the way this thing works, let's hop out and we're going to go over to our Ford Observer. So our Ford Observer wants to call in artillery on this location here. Now there's a number of, w number of ways to get this to work. You can look at the map, you can deduce that the uh, artillery needs to be called in right here. And then you could just look at it and say, okay, 110, 123, and you pretty easily come up with a, a, a grid that you can call in the artillery with. It's, it's not hard, uh, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you do it a few times, uh, being able to find topographical references and landmarks to to call in uh, artillery on a, on a specific grid location it's actually relatively easy but we're gonna make it even easier just for the sake of time so what I'm gonna do I went ahead and place this crate right here so we're gonna go into gear and we're gonna pick up the dagger so now that we have the dagger I bring it up with shift home I'm gonna go down to connect to select and we're going to use the vector 21 which is the optic that we just uh, just had pulled up so power that down hit home again and now the GPS instead of showing uh, our location and speed and all that good stuff it's going to show the location of whatever target that we were just looking at uh, with the vector so let's bring up the vector again hit R to load the batteries up hit alt R to change from degrees to mills because that's what all this is uh, is dialed in with the reason is degrees you have 360 in a circle and mills you have 6400 so obviously there's a lot more accuracy with mills so we're gonna aim at the target I wanna call in the strike right there click so 980 meters and it's at a bearing of 6056 mils or 6055 somewhere right around there so again it's just look and click that's all you got to do so it lays the target for you so let's drop back out hit home get rid of the optic so our target grid location is 11041232 so I'm going to write that down one one zero four one two three two the elevation is 218 meters now the way you would figure that up if you didn't have the dagger you can see it's uh, 209 here 232 227 basically what you would do forget rid of this contour intervals are, are at two meters at this height you can see that changes depending on uh, the scale of the map but it's 209 here and 227 here so if it's two meters between each contour line, then you can pretty simply do the math, or, or I should say it's pretty simple to do the math and find that since it's between these two lines, it's gonna come out to right at 218, and there you go. Um, I'm not gonna get into that, that's uh, for another day, but that's pretty much it. So there's our, our target. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to our battery computer all it is is a Humvee you can get into any position I like to get into the back or I don't know either the back of the passenger seat just because battery name can be whatever you want I'm just gonna call it Artie FTC call sign um, steel rain because it sounds badass battery type is the M 119A1 105 millimeter howitzer now it's gonna ask for the grid the altitude and the direction of fire so let's hop back out I know that when I place this on the map, 
I placed it at directly north or zero degrees. So it should be 6400 mils. Now if we want to confirm that, we can pull up the vector. Stand directly behind the gun. Put the batteries in, might help. And yeah, zero. So basically it's 6400 zero or zero. Uh, it's pretty much directly north. And we pull out our compass. You can do it this way too. And you can see, again, it's almost directly north. But you want to stand directly behind it. Now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to stand right behind the gun as close as I can. And I'm going to pull up the GPS. And you can see that the battery grid is at 0647073.9. And our altitude is 287 meters. Pretty simple. So run over here. I'm going to get back in. It's our grid. 0647739. You always want to double check your numbers. Altitude 287. Direction of fire. It's going to be 6400. Target prefix can be anything you want. So I'm just going to go with A1. Now, we could uh, add in our, our observer information, but we're not going to worry about that now. Known points, I'm not worried about it either. Ignore all this, by the way. I was trying to pull something else up earlier, uh, right before I started the video. So, none of this shit should show up, but that's beside the point. So, uh, grid, polar, or shift. So, if you go into polar, this is essentially looking from your observer. So, if you have your observer's location, their altitude, and the direction they're looking, and then the range to the target, you can deduce the target grid. That's what this is for. Now if you have the grid location of the target, you can just put it in and fire off that way, or you can shift if you need to shift your fire uh, left, right, add, drop, up or down. Again, it's pretty simple. I'm going to get a grid because we have the grid reference for this fire mission. Our target grid is 11041232. One one zero four one two three two. Yep, and altitude two eight one. Yeah, two one eight. Sorry, just went went dyslexic. Target description, anything you want. I'm just going to put um, HQ. So you know, if it was like troops in the open, you put enemy troops in the open or whatever. Radius of width it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put five length five alt or attitude. This is essentially the orientation, and it's registered in mils. Um, I don't know the orientation, so I'm going to leave it blank. Is it danger close? No. Uh, we are, what, 900 some meters out. If we're within like 400 meters, it's danger close, but not worried about it. Just going to leave no. We don't have any notes. We are right now going to be using high explosive rounds, so we're going to leave this on HE. But you also have uh, DPICM, smoke, and alum. Um, DPICM is dual purpose uh, improved conventional ammunition, I believe. And essentially, it's a cluster bomb or a cluster shell. Uh, you set the fuse to go off at a, you know, a preset uh, from the target. It explodes and multiple little bomblets come flying out and it kind of carpet bombs that area. Um, smoke, that's pretty self-explanatory. It just pops smoke over the area and a lot of smoke. And a loom is just for illumination. So it's basically like a flare. Um, we want HE though because we want high explosives. Set your fuse. Uh, you can either point that nate, which means it's the target to go off. Uh, you can set proximity, so if it's uh, within a certain distance from the target, it'll go off. And then you have time and delay, so you can set it to go off after a certain amount of time, or you can set a uh, delay, which is kind of the same thing. Um, for HE, I always go with point detonate, but that's just me. Fuse time, leave it blank. Round count. We're going to go with one for right now. Sheaf, I have no idea. Leave it parallel because that's the only option. And we're going to do fire one ready uh, as our method of control. So we're going to click adjust. And you can see it just calculated up, uh, what, eight different solutions. So you can scroll through your solutions. And you can see the numbers up in the battery information are changing. Now the big big one you want to note right here is time of flight. 
time of flight with the first one is 14 seconds, 18, 23, 33, 43, 58. Now, basically this is the angle of the gun more than anything else. Uh, the, the shallower the angle, the faster it's going to reach the target, but then you have to factor in, uh, you have to, or you, excuse me, you have to factor in uh, topographical features. Is it going to slam into the side of a mountain before it gets there? Obviously that could be very bad. So I always go with a high arcing shot. This one, 58 seconds, it's about a minute, plenty of time. So the way this fire mission will be called in, uh, it'll be fire mission, platoon adjust, number one, one round. Azimuth, 0761, charge six, deflection, 3961, quadrant, 1124, one round, fuse quick in effect. And then message to observer would be, of course, message to observer, still rain, HE in effect, one round. This is your target designation here, Alpha 0001, time of flight, 58.6. And then you call out your shot, shot over, splash, etc., etc. Um, if you hit shot, it actually counts down for you. So, pretty cool. We're not going to worry about that. Um, and I can't stop it, apparently, but whatever. So, time of flight is 58.6. Now, the numbers that you need to make note of, I always keep track of the az azimuth, even though it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll write that down. Your charge, very important. I'll show you that in a second. So charge is going to be 6. Deflection, 3, 9, or 6, 1. And quadrant, 1, 1, 2, 4. Now your quadrant, oops, your quadrant is actually the elevation of the gun. But I'll show you that in a second. So charge was six so we're going to walk over here this right here is let's see if it'll show 105 ammo m1 he with fuse the m782 round so if you hit your uh ace interaction key i moved mine to left windows because i don't have a right one you can hit prep already rounds this i need to research I have an idea of what it might do. I've tried it before, it didn't really work, but I think I screwed something up. But for right now, prep already rounds. So you can set your fuse here. We won't point detonate. Charge, current charge is set to eight. So this is the charge that's inside the shell. So if you go charge up, nothing happens because that's the highest that it go. And if you go charge down, you can see we're actually removing charges. So our charge is six. That's what the FTC uh, calculated for. So current charge six prep round and then I'm going to do that repeatedly or repetitively until we have all rounds on the ground right here and yes that's actually accurate I think that's pretty damn cool <laughs> so there's our our artillery shells that we're going to be firing off this is the battery that we're going to be using I'm going to walk over to it. we're going to get in as the gunner we're going to view the M137 sight unit. So if you hit change view, it shows the collimator. But we're going to stick with this view for right now. Azimuth, deflection, elevation, level. So what you want to do, your deflection, it goes up and down in increments of one. If you hit shift, it goes in tens. And if you hit control shift, it goes in hundreds. So instead of clicking this thing however many times for the deflection, um, we're going to use control shift to make it faster. So deflection 3961. And you can see the sight unit is rotating. Now I'm going to use shift and go down two, and then down like that. So deflection 3961. Quadrant. Quadrant is your elevation. So elevation, we're going to click and we're going to bring this thing up to 1124. All right, so at this point, if you hit change view, we're looking, uh, looks like at the axles of the other uh, howitzer that's over here. So we're going to get out. Now our sight unit here, that thing is rotated. So if we get over here and we look at it, you can see that now it's pointing again. It's over here at the axles of this howitzer. We need it to point over here at the collimator. So if you get behind this thing, you can shift left or right. We need to shift it to the right. So we're going to use the S key 
to drag this thing backwards. And you can see that that sighting unit is starting to slowly line up. Hit C to stand up. C is Charlie. Now if we stand back over here and look at it, we went a little too far. So we're going to shift to the left. Let's try it right here. Let's see, let's see what we're looking at. Eh, probably going to have to go a little to the left, but we're going to get in and look at the, the sight unit. So yeah, we need to go a little bit to the left. I'm going to go left twice. So shift left. I'm going to go one, two. And then stand up. We're going to get in as the gunner. Hit the view. Change view. All right, so we're pretty close. So this, this is the part where everybody screws up uh, when they first start. And I know I did God knows how many times. So if you notice, you have these numbers going across here, and you have these numbers on the collimator itself. At this point, what you need to do, use your left and right arrow keys, you can actually move or traverse your optical, your sight. All right, and it uses the same uh, shift and control. I'm sorry, actually it's just shift, but uh, shift makes you move in larger units. So a lot of people would think, I need to line this thing up dead center. You know, or they're, they're going to try to line it up, you know, just by traversing the gun with their hands and pulling it. They're never going to get it close, but then if it does miraculously get close, just because your deflection is at some magic number, your shots are still going to be landing, you know, one, one click or more uh, out of where they need to be. So these numbers need to line up. Now it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like, well, that's kind of close. OP is for optic, plus and minus. If you go minus, it brings it down. I'm going to use shift to bring it down a little bit quicker. I'm going to line it up in the center. And you can see that 30, if we go left and right, I actually had that dead on. Now, you're never going to get the numbers to line up perfectly, but you want them as close as you possibly can get them. So I'm just going to line up like that. So you can see that 30 on this line is lined up with 30 on the collimator, and 35 is, is damn close to it. So we're good to go here. So change our view. Now we use the up and down arrows to bring the gun up and down. Now this is a little backwards because if you hit up, the gun goes down. If you hit down, the gun goes up. And again, if you use shift, and actually if you use control shift, it moves a little bit faster. Actually, no, it's just shift. Anyways, you want to bring this thing up. Now watch where it says level over here by elevation. You want that bubble in the center. We just passed it. So we're going to go up and down until it's dead center, right there. All right, so double check our numbers. Deflection is 3961, quadrant 1124. We're in the center. I'm going to hit level gun. The gun's now level. Hit change view, make sure our traverse and everything, when we look through, uh, look through the little periscope, everything on the collimator is lined up, everything's good to go. So we're going to back back out, we're going to get out. So now what I'm going to do, now that this beautiful piece of equipment is lined up with our target, I'm going to come over here, I'm going to pick up a shell, you need to use your interact key, I'm go carry, and I'm going to carry it over to the left side of the gun. And then in carry. The reason I put it on the left is when you get out of the gun, you're always going to get out on the left hand side. So I'm actually going to fire off, let's just say four rounds. That's probably about all I'm going to manage to get out without screwing this up. I hate when that happens. There we go. This is why if you end up doing this, uh, preferably in multiplayer, you're going to have at least two, preferably three or four people. Uh, you'll have a loader, you'll have someone working the FDC and dealing with uh, taking in fire missions, and then you'll also have somebody, what did I just do? I think I just loaded that into the battery computer. Whoops. Oh well. Carry. 
Um, you'll have somebody taking in your fire missions, you know, working the radio and all that good stuff, putting it into the FDC, and then you'll have somebody loading the gun physically, and you'll have somebody that is in the gun as a gunner, checking the numbers, making sure everything's good, and then actually firing off your shots. Um, and then you also have somebody that can move this thing and traverse it left and right while your gunner's looking through here and making sure that as soon as this thing comes into view, as soon as it's pretty close to center, he can say stop, put it down. Um, that's, that's the way I would do it. But anyway, so we're going to carry, walk over to the gun, load gun. I'm going to get in as the gunner. Now I'm going to fire around, jump out, and I'm going to repeat that until we're out of shells. Carry. Load gun. Get in. Fire. Get out. Carry. Load gun. Get in. Fire. Get out. Whoop. Carry. Load gun. Get in. Fire. Get out. Now we just used all of our rounds. We're going to come over here. Pull up my vector again. And we're going to wait. Now if you wanted to, you could time it. Realistically, you'd have somebody on the radio telling you um, they just pass right over top of our heads. Boom. Right on the money. I'd say that's uh I'd say that's pretty accurate. God, I love that noise. Oh, they got a flyer. Gun might have jumped a little bit. Let's see where this next one hits. No, oh, right on the money. All right.